On this episode, I get salty and deep. This is Gary Vay Nerdchuck, and this is episode 165 of the Ask Gary V Show. Yesterday was a rarity. I actually punted the show. Just said I'm not doing it. I was extremely salty uh, off the uh, Jets loss. Uh, I missed my prediction only the second time this year. I am now no longer doing any Jets predictions. Um, just not gonna do it. Sorry. Not gonna make a decision on the Jets Dolphins. I don't feel like I have a pulse of this team. Anymore, and I don't think uh, it, I don't think that I should continue to do it. So I'm I'm actually still in a pretty salty mood. Um, I think the Chiefs moonwalk into the playoffs now with the Steelers. So I think ultimately my postseason dreams have been squashed. Um, not looking to be Debbie Downer, just quite practical. Um, and uh, that's what I've got for you to open 165. <laughs> Guys, I'm really upset. Thank God for Zinger. There's a little bit of hope in Knicks land. I mean, Jesus Christ. The Knicks have not been relevant since I've become in the public internet domain. So I don't even know if people think I'm a Knicks fan or know that I am. I like, yeah, I like literally never talk about it. Uh, it's been that shut down, so that's got me a little excited. But that is very much a consolation prize. Early, early our fourth round, our fourth pick overall producing uh, for the Knicks is what I'm now on. This Dolphins game is very important, but whatever. So, hope you have a great Thanksgiving. I know that's coming up. Do we do a show tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll give you the hardcore Thanksgiving thing tomorrow. Sean Ryan is here. Hey, Sean, man. tell the Vayner Nation about yourself. Uh, so, I'm Sean Ryan. I'm a project manager here at Vayner Media. Um, two years full time in January, which is exciting. You had, a, you had a tremendous, illustrious intern career. Tremendous and very illustrious. Aaron Bear likes to tell me that I worked about a quarter of my life for the Vayner. I love that. <laughs> so I started working for Gary when I was 17 for Cork. That's amazing. Good times. Yes, very much, brother. It's good to see you. Good to be here. Uh, India? No, I'm sad. You're sad, right? Yeah. It's like a sad vibe, 165. Mm-hmm, a little bit. Somebody left a great comment on Instagram that the, uh, the green era was over because I missed the guest, I thought that was a good play to the golden era. So big shout out to that person. I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. I'm not catching, my Jets receivers aren't catching a lot of stuff either. <laughs> I'm in a really bad mood. Like I, I, don't, I really don't want to do the show. I mean I want to because I love you guys so much but like I'm really pissed. Like I, like I there's been a lot of uh, meetings with executives that I've been punting because I don't want to, I hate delivering bad news. I've scheduled them all this week. Got a bunch of them later today and tomorrow because I'm salty. I, I'm in a good mindset to just drill people in the face. Wow. Mm. Andy, let's get into the show. Okay. <laughs> I even wore a yellow shirt yesterday because I was going to be like, oh, trying to I'm cheer it up. Black. No, because I know I know. it's not wear black and then cancel it. Yeah. From Evan? You put up a sassy Instagram photo. I did. It was sassy. Very sassy. I'm sassy. You are sassy. I'm a pretty sassy person. All right, let's go, Indy. It's <laughs> not the Ask India show. Evan asks, why am I seeing an influx of tech companies using billboards to advertise? Slack, Snapchat, Yahoo, etc. Um, God, I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> um, Evan, you're seeing that because, first of all, you should never put 100, and by the way, I speak in absolutes on this show, so please let me use this moment, especially for the people that catch this episode or watch every show, contextualize this. I love to talk definitively because I don't think people take action and I think it takes definitive stances to kind of move the needle, but there's no situation where 100% of actions is the right thing. There's always a proper hedge to everything. I really, really do believe that in your execution. And so in marketing, when you're in a Yahoo or a Slack or a Snapchat and you've gotten to that scale and you have that much money in marketing budget, there's only so much you can allocate to 100% Facebook, 100% Instagram, 100% digital. And when there's these big consumer brands, there's a demo from the, call it the 45 to 75 year old uh, demo that people, like Snapchat wants 45 year olds to use Snapchat. Like that's just straight up. And definitely Yahoo, it's a mature brand. And Slack is a SaaS enterprise software that 
you know, 52, 49, 63. I mean, James Orsini, who's in his 50s as an executive in VaynerMedia, he's helping make a decision if we're gonna use Slack along with AJ and things of that nature. And they want that demo to be educated and their belief is that billboards is a place to play that. Look, I'm not high on billboards. I think they're overpriced because I think people are looking at their mobile devices, but they're not worth zero. And if you know that you're going in and you're gonna spend $7,000 on this billboard a month and you think it's only worth 2,300, but that 2,300 value is worth it to you paying 7,000, follow me here, then that's the right thing. I mean like, you know, that's it. I mean like, like you know, if it's worth spending $1,000 on a dinner with the prettiest girl you ever went on a date for, for the ROI of a kiss, if you decided that the kiss was worth 1,000, well then it's worth it. And that's what I think on billboards, which is, you know, if they decide it's worth 7,000, even though they know that they're overpaying, well then that's what you do and so I think, I think you're gonna see more television commercials for that reason from internet companies. You're seeing it with Airbnb and Uber. When you saturate one medium, you have to go to another place where you get more upside. Once you crush digital like those companies have, overpaying for traditional has more value to you. So it's the timing in which those companies deploy the media. They didn't start that place. They first got a better ROI. You're getting all these people digitally for call it eight bucks a head, 18 bucks a head. Well, now it's starting to cost us $38 a head because we've gotten everybody and we can't get no mores. So we'll go over here, we'll pay 52 because at least we can get new people and it's now worth 52 for us. That's why. That was really good considering the anger I feel in my body. Thanks, India. Anthony? Oh wait, what, what, I, wanna, I wanna, uh, I mean, Sean's just sitting here. Might as well do a little, f- maybe Facebook. Let me see what I'm gonna do here. Yeah, let's do a little scopey scope. <laughs> Hold this. <laughs> Look how you're looking at it. All right. From Anthony. Anthony. Anthony asks, you recommend working for free, but how do you know if someone is just trying to get free stuff and passing it off as exposure? Uh, you don't. Fine. <laughs> you don't, and that's the point. Like, not every f-ing thing has upside every single time you do it. It's a net net score. You do it 38 times. To- D Rock, you did movies for free besides me, and this just just popped in my head. How many? At least twenty. Twenty. At least. For people that looked like my profile. No. How many that looked like my profile? Two. Two. Right, and then you got a bunch after, right? <laughs> that hit you. That's right. Yeah. So, how did those twenty work out for you? Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I didn't expect you to say bad. Like I'm curious. Like wh- one, 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 like one project fed me for the entire freelance thing, but the other nineteen not so much. Got it. And then how about mine? Fed me pretty well. Yeah. Okay. So you know, I mean, so I think I think that uh, I think that it's uh, I I think you don't. I think look, you can look into people's backgrounds, see their actions. I would tell you off of the you know, exposure and hyperbole of DRock's free work on this show, I'm probably in a better position today than I was two years ago to get people to want to do free work because they're like, well, I want to be that. Um, so you can look into people's history um, and if you can, but you just really don't. You have to use your intuition. Like, do you know how many meetings I go and pitch new business and then others I don't? And I'm making a judgment call like it's a use of my time, my biggest asset. And was it worth going for three hours and flying? It was it worth a day flying, pitching the business, and then we didn't get it. That was a bad judgment call. But then sometimes it works out. It's a net net game. This insanity for the short term ROI of every action is so goddamn broken. What's his name again? Anthony. Anthony. That you know, I think way too many people are crippled. You don't. You don't know a lot of things. Shit. You don't know almost everything. Like seriously, like, like what do you know in life? Like is this the right college? Is this the right friends? Is this the right boyfriend? Like you don't know anything. True. You make decisions and you adjust and live with them. You counter punch the reality. Work too, this freelance high ground of like, nah, it's supply and demand motherfuckers. <laughs> like if there's people willing to do it, then that's just the, sh- the f- that's the shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super salty. Just see, I mean, we're four and one. Now we're five and five. That means we've gone one and four for you math strugglers out there. Thank you. Thomas. Thomas. I'm a little nervous for the rest of the people. <laughs> Why the questions get? No, they're good. It's... Listen, 
you wanted to be on the show, you got 165. I mean, it just, you didn't know. You didn't know what was gonna happen. You didn't know that some random football team that you don't give a crap about changed the vibe of your answers on a show that you liked. Sorry. Thomas asks, how would you manage having a higher demand than production capacity? How do you manage expectations when you have two to three months of latency? You hire freelancers and you work on lower mar- what? I'm sorry, I'm just like nervous. Okay, got it. <laughs> you, you hire freelancers and you work on less margin. You go to your best people that are there for the long haul and you ask them to work more hours. So if they work seven hours uh, and they work 14 hours, you can get more shit done. You adjust, you like, you, you know, the end. You, if you, if you're, you, you can't be late for clients. If they want it and you're late, you lose. Project manager shaking his head, right? I mean like, like dream. yeah, I mean like look, Here's something that's subjective. The creative. Ooh, I like this video. Ooh, I like this sweater. Ooh, I hate this sweater. Ooh, I like your yellow shirt. Those are things are subjective. What's not subjective is it's due on Wednesday. Oh, we got it to, we'll give it to you in a week later. They don't feel good. So you either outsource with freelancers and you make a lot less margin because it costs more per hour or bites into your margin or maybe you lose money but you want to deliver for the client and you keep them longer and you play lifetime value, not the ROI on every single thing or you ask your team to step up or you step up if you have that capability. I'm not scared to make a video. I know Jason and DRock can make it better, but like, I'll do it. Matt asks, if you could change one part of Facebook's API for marketers and business pages, what would it be? I don't give a crap, Matt, about this question. <laughs> like, like, like India. Um, but I think I'm now playing into my character of this show. If I would, <laughs> so I'm dissing myself. Screw you, Gary. <laughs> One part of Facebook's API for marketers and business pages, what would it be? I mean, look, Matt, I think it's a great question. It's very tactical. I think we as marketers would always take more data. I want everything, right? Like, if I could follow people around, I would do that. Like, I would just, like, so the the truth of the answer is any piece of data that they're not giving me, like, uh, I would love the data of first name data. I want to target people by their first name. I don't think you can do that right now. So I'd like to reach out to every Gary and be like, yo, it's me, Gary, as well. Let's be boys, all Garys. So I, lo- I would love to target people by first name. Um, and uh, and uh, I don't think you have that capability yet, so that would be one. And, and there's probably 15 other cohorts that I'm not completely up to date on of what we have access to and what we don't. Uh, but I would love to have more access, more data points. Whatever, if I, if I had the time to sit down right now and have, because it's moving all the time. So I'm, if I went to the, the analytics and paid team right now and said, okay, let's just do a quick update. Whatever the first highest value data point on an individual is that I don't have access to would be the answer to this question. And, and that would be the thing that I would have a creative idea against that I don't have access to, like first name targeting. Like that'd be funny, right? Like India, if you saw that in your stream, you're like, hey, it's me, India, like just gathering all Indias. You'd be like, that's kind of cool. That's funny. I actually did that with a MySpace group in high school. I was like, all Indias join. Seriously? It's fun. Yeah. yeah. How many Indias were there? There were like 300 or something. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. What nationality are most Indias? Um, a lot of them are English because mm-hmm. the colony. Yep. And then a lot of them are in the South, actually. A lot of people in the South named India. So. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, the Periscope squad is really excited about it. Following people around, like me personally following them around. You said you love to follow people around. Yeah, I want to follow you around, Periscope. What else? That's it. Last one from Josh. Josh. Josh asks, how clearly do you need to see the end goal and the path to get there before you can begin? Clarity before hustle. The clarity is everything. If you don't know where you're going, you will get lost. Ooh. Ooh. I'm sure somebody said that before, but I, it's the first <laughs> time I've said. It. I like it. If like like you just uh. The clarity is everything. Like, no question, my clarity on my professional goal, uh, which is the vanity professional goal of buying the New York Jets, but more importantly, the depth of that, which is the process of trying to buy the Jets, has absolutely, uh, and then my real one that, I don't talk about that often, but once in a while on the show, of like getting everybody to be guilted into going to my, like Sean, you'll come to my funeral, right? 100%. Awesome, so like, like, you know, that to me, allows me to interact the way, it, it, that's what, like making sure that everybody comes to my funeral is probably the reason I need to get salty to have like the tough conversations because I'm just, I'm soft that way because I just love, <laughs> so I just love. I also hate, I hate football. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So I think the clarity really matters. I think a lot of you, and I've been reading a lot of your comments, especially on Instagram, I'm really deeply entrenched there right now. So start leaving more comments because that is 100% a place I'm gonna see them. Um, I, and by the way, actually, let me take a step back. Thank you so much, Vayner. The, the real answers to who are you, you guys saw, like deep, like deep. I'm gonna go review and read everyone one more time. I read probably 40%. I'm gonna read them all because I, uh, I'm just too appreciative that you actually did that. Um, there was some deep stuff, some very real stuff. Uh, oh, join my email newsletter. We're pushing that right now. <laughs> Ding. Um, link it, Stefan, in the uh, in the YouTube and the uh, the YouTube and the Facebook. Um, a lot of you don't have your clarity. A lot of you are looking for the vanity or the short-term things out of pain, out of ambition. Um, and I have empathy for both of those things. Uh, the truth is you just gotta know. And, and, and it's interesting, somebody left an Instagram photo of like boring about what I was posting because he was like basically saying, look, I'm over trying to build a business. Like I travel a bunch, I don't make that much money, I'm happy as hell. And I was like, I like replied, I was like, I'm pumped. Like just so everybody knows, like I, I don't know if you guys are getting tricked by the facade. This whole show, my whole energy is like, I just want people to be happy. Like people pay attention for, to me because I think they're gravitating towards believing that business success will bring them a certain level of happiness. But like, I just want everybody to know forever, for the record, maybe this is a medium piece, for the record, while I'm salty, I'm, you can be pumped as hell at $49,000 a year and boy, boy do I envy the crap out of that. Boy do I envy, more than anything in the world, somebody who's wired internally to be able to get a commoditized job where there's a lot of them to make a forty to $60,000 a year pay to then live a lower middle class or depending on what part of the world you live in that you're very excited about just checking the box on those 40 hours, that is not where your passion lies. Come home and your whole life revolves around the bowling team. Drinking beers with your buddies that you went to high school with that never left town. I mean these are cliche things but I'm being dead goddamn serious right now. Like what the hell's wrong with that? That's awesome. Like crap, that is tremendous. Like that's the best. Like, you, like I know this because I know how upset I am about the Jets, that's something I care about. I almost don't care about anything else this way and it's a better life. I'm a much happier person outside of my football life. Like it's great. Like, like you know, what is it like, what is that whole thing? Like naive, being naive is bliss or what is the saying? Ignorance. Ignorance is like, there's truth to that. Meaning like, and that's not, it's like simplicity is delicious. Well that's a good one too. Like simplicity is delicious, like, like what is possible? Please don't, please don't think you're watching the show because I'm trying to rah-rah you to working 90 hours a day. I'm just telling you what it takes to make a lot of money in a hyper-competitive business world in 2016. I'm not telling you that's the light to happiness. The light to happiness is to be so self-aware of what makes you tick and go do that. But don't complain that you're not making it when you're not doing actions to make it. Like I don't complain about missing my family. You will not hear me say that because I'm not entitled to say that because my actions don't map to that pain. You're just doing the reverse. You're complaining. Like woe is me, unfair. It's not unfair. It's talent and work, period. You think, you wanna call that your parents had sex at a moment that turned you into a human and didn't give you a certain talent that you subjectively wish you had? Cool. You think that's unfair? Fine. I think you're a dick face because I think the fact that you even became a human being is the greatest thing that ever happened. But you're more than welcome to say like, oh, why am I not the prettiest or why don't I have Beyonce's voice? Like, fine. Like, like shit, I wish I was 6'9 and can dunk and pass. Like, for, I wish I was that LSU kid, light skin, freaking got moves, like, great, but it's not what I have. Like, know who you are, go execute, but if you sit and watch this show on your phone right now on the subway and you're happy, because you're so happy where you're going right now, whether to work or leaving work and going to the Knicks game or the lowly Nets game or your darts championship with your homies, like that's the only thing that matters. Cool. That's deep. Yep. Great, question of the day. 
Do you think the Jets can win on Sunday? <laughs> I could really use it. I, you know, Steve Ross owns the Dolphins. He's my business partner, so we play him. It's usually a big game. We crush them in London. I'm not so confident this time around. Uh, but as 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 that's the, a joke. Here's the real question today: What wine are you drinking at Thanksgiving? And this is a great time, lurkers. I just gave you a very compelling, heartfelt three-minute rant that I thought was really good. I really, 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 really think that you should leave a comment and say hello. Because I'm going to the holiday weekend, I will have some time to really look. I'm, I'm drawing a line in the sand. Every goddamn lurker, please come out and leave a comment on Facebook and YouTube. I need it. I need it bad. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them.